Shalom, brothers. In this video, we're going to be talking about the controversial topic of interracial marriage. And this topic has caused a lot of strife and debate in Israel. Not so much on whether or not a man can just go and take a heathen wife, because for the most part, uh, brothers promote the coming together of the Israelite man with the Israelite woman. But the debate comes in as to whether or not taking a heathen in marriage is sin. Uh, we're going to prove through the laws of God because this is the authority of the scriptures, the law of the Most High. We're going to prove that it is a sin to take a heathen in marriage. And we're going to use or we're going to get our understanding based off of the laws of God. Because it tells you in the book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 33 and verse 3, that a man of understanding trusted in the law. And the law is faithful unto him as an oracle, meaning he relies on the things that he understands based off of the laws of the Most High. So we're going to rely on the laws of God to gain our understanding on this topic. So the first law, uh, which is the basis of this topic, is Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 1. It says, When the Lord thy God shall bring thee into the land where thou goest to possess it, and has cast out many nations before thee, the Hittites and the Girgashites and the Amorites and the Canaanites and the Perizzites and the Hevites and the Jebusites, seven nations greater and mightier than thou. Now, first thing I want you to pay attention in this verse. Notice how it started off by saying many nations and then it only named seven. Now, why would they use two different Hebrew words in writing this law by starting off by saying that there's many nations, but then only listing seven. All right, because what brothers will say is that the only people who were forbidden to marry, um, according to the law, are these seven particular Canaanite nations. Because when you look at when you look up all these nations, these are descendants of Canaan. So they'll say, oh, well, these are the only ones who were prohibited from marrying, as we're going to read in the next couple of verses. All right, then it says in verse 2, And when the Lord thy God shall deliver them before thee, thou shalt smite them and utterly destroy them. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor show mercy unto them. Neither shalt thou make marriages with them. Thy daughter thou shalt not give unto his son, nor his daughter shalt thou take unto thy son. Verse 4 is the point. For they will turn away thy son from following me, that they may serve other gods. So will the anger of the Lord be kindled against you and destroy thee suddenly. So the point of not taking these heathens in marriage is so that the hearts of your sons don't turn after the gods of the foreign women that they are taking in marriage. This is the point. All right. But now once again, notice in verse one that it said many nations and not seven. We're going to prove that. It's not just talking about these seven particular Canaanite nations that we are forbidden to marry, but also extends out to other nations as well. All right. So we're going to prove that as we go along through this video. The next law that we're going to is recorded in Deuteronomy chapter 21 and verse five. And pay attention to the, what this law states. All right. In verse five, it says the and the priests, the sons of Levi shall come near for them. The Lord thy God had chosen to minister unto him. And to bless in the name of the Lord and by their word shall every controversy and every stroke be tried. So now the most high, he sanctified the Levites in numbers, the third chapter, um, instead of all the firstborn of the children of Israel. And these are the ones who minister in his name. And these are the ones who he sanctified, who he consecrated to minister before him in the tabernacle. And he told them by their word. Shall every controversy, this debate is a controversy amongst Israel. So now the law is telling us that by the priest's word, shall every controversy and every stroke or matter be tried. Deuteronomy chapter 17 and verse 8, right, is going to say the same thing. It says in verse 8, if there arise a matter too hard for the in judgment, right, this topic is become a matter that is too hard for us in Israel um, in judgment because you got brothers saying, you know, we can't take a heathen wife. You got brothers saying, nah, we can't take a heathen wife, right? So obviously this matter has become too hard for us in judgment, 
right? Look what it says. Between blood and blood, between plea and plea. Once again, my plea, we can take heathen wives and you got others that plea, we can't. All right. And between stroke and stroke being matters of controversy within thy gates. Right. This is a controversial topic, a controversial debate. Then shalt thou arise and get thee up into the place which the Lord thy God shall choose. And thou shalt come unto, guess who? The priests, the Levites, and unto the judge that shall be in those days and inquire. And they shall show thee the sentence of judgment. So we were supposed or we were commanded to go to the priests, the sons of Levi, in terms of when we had a matter that was too hard for ourselves in judgment. The Most High said, by their word shall every matter be tried. So whatever they say, that is what goes. So I'm going to read verse 9 again, right? It says, And thou shalt come unto the priests, sons of Aaron, the Levites, and unto the judge that shall be in those days, and inquire, and they shall show thee the sentence of judgment. And thou shalt do according to the sentence which they of that place which the Lord shall choose shall show thee. And thou shalt observe to do according to all that they inform thee, according to the sentence of the law which they shall teach thee, and according to the judgment which they shall tell thee, thou shalt do. Thou shalt not decline from the sentence which they shall show thee to the right hand nor to the left. So now what this law of God is telling us is that when we have a matter that is too difficult for us in judgment, we're supposed to go to the priest and whatever judgment they determine, whatever their word is. Right. This is why we read Deuteronomy 21 and 5, which says by their word shall every controversy be tried, whatever their word is, whatever their judgment is. That is what you are commanded to do. You have to do it. This is a law of God. So now let's see what happens if you decide not to do it. Verse 12. And the man that will do presumptuously, meaning the man is going to do whatever he want to do. He don't, he don't care what the priest say. He don't care what the sentence that the priest gave him. He said, you know what? I don't care what you're talking about. I'm going to do whatever I want to do. Right. The man that will do presumptuously. And will not hearken unto the priest that standeth to minister there before the Lord thy God or unto the judge. Even that man shall die. And thou shalt put away the evil from Israel. The law is very clear. Whatever the priest determine in judgment, that is what we are commanded to do. Right. Now, let's just get one more witness, because early in this chapter, it tells you that under two or three witnesses is every matter established. So let's get one more witness. Leviticus chapter 10, I'm going to start at verse 8, where it says, And the Lord spake unto Aaron, saying, Do not drink wine nor strong drink, thou nor thy sons with thee when you go into the tabernacle of the congregation, lest ye die. It shall be a statue forever throughout your generations. Right. So now the Most High has given laws to Aaron and his sons, who are the priests, the ones who, by their words, shall the controversies and the matters be tried. Right. So he's given them laws. Let's see what he says in verse 10. It said that you may put a difference between holy and unholy and between clean, excuse me, and between unclean and clean. And that ye may teach the children of Israel all the statutes which the Lord has spoken unto them by the hand of Moses. So now we see that not only is it the priest's job to establish judgment between the controversies of the children of Israel, but they're also supposed to teach the children of Israel the laws of God. All right, so now that we have these laws, let's get an example of this. Okay, so now we're in the book of 1st Ezra chapter 8. This book will be found in your Apocrypha. Let's see what it says. In verse 1, it says, And after these things, when Artaxerxes, the king of the Persians, reigned, came Estrus, the son of Sarias, the son of Azarias. Right, skip down all the way to verse 2, to the end of verse 2. It says, The son of Phineas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the chief priest. So now what we're doing is we're establishing that this man, Estrus, all right, also known as Ezra in your King James Bible, he is literally the descendant of Aaron. So he is a priest. We just read that it is his job to teach Israel the statutes and the judgments of the Most High and to determine judgment, right? It says in verse 3, this Esdras went up from Babylon as a scribe, being very ready 
in the law of Moses that was given by the God of Israel. So he was very ready in the law, meaning he was able to understand the law at a high level. Right. Jump to verse seven. For Esdras had very great skill so that he omitted nothing of the law and commandments of the Lord, but taught all Israel the ordinances and the judgments. Once again, he's performing his duty as a priest, teaching all Israel the laws, statutes and commandments of the Most High, And he omitted nothing. So everything that is in the law, he taught. OK, so now let's see what happens when Ezra is presented with this controversy. It says in verse 68. Now, when these things were done, the rulers came unto me. The me is Ezra and said, the nation of Israel, the princes, the priests and Levites have not put away from them the strange people of the land, nor the pollutions of the Gentiles to wit of the Canaanites, Hittites, Perizzites, Jebusites and the Moabites, Egyptians and Edomites for both they and their sons have married with their daughters and the holy seed is mixed with the strange people of the land. And from the beginning of this matter, the rulers and the great men have been partakers of this iniquity. So now the question that I have to the brothers who believe that you only cannot deal with the seven Canaanite nations that are listed in Deuteronomy 7 is why is it that Esdras or the rulers of Israel, because it's actually the rulers who are coming to Esdras with this controversy. Why are the rulers, including the Moabites, Egyptians, and Edomites, if it's not a sin to marry Moabites, Edomites, and Egyptians? Because in verse 70, it just said, have been partakers of this iniquity. And we know that the word iniquity is sin, which we're going to prove in a minute. So now these are the two things that I want you to pay attention to. In verse 69, it includes Moabites, Egyptians, and Edomites. And in verse 70, it calls this act of marrying these women an iniquity. Jump to verse 82. It says, And now, O Lord, what shall we say, having these things? For we have transgressed thy commandments, which thou gavest by the hand of thy servants, the prophets. Notice how it said prophets, right? Because we're going to get back to this in a minute. Verse 83. That the land which ye entered to possess as an heritage is a land polluted with the pollutions of the strangers of the land and they have filled it with their uncleanness therefore now shall ye not join your daughters unto their sons neither shall ye take their daughters unto your sons jump to verse 92 then jeconias the son of jaleas one of the sons of israel called out and said "O Ezra, we have sinned against the lord god we have married strange women of the nations of the land, and now is all Israel aloft. Let us make an oath to the Lord that we will put away all our wives, which we have taken of the heathen with their children. So now the next two things that I want people to understand is that in verse 92, it said that they have sinned in marrying the strange women of the people of the land. So now we saw that it was called an iniquity. We see that now it's being called a sin. And then once again to the brothers who only said that you only can't deal with Canaanite nations. It said, let us put away our wives, which we have taken of the heathen. The word heathen is talking about everybody except the Israelites. So why didn't it say, let us put away our wives, which we have taken of the Canaanites. Instead of saying heathen. Because heathen is a broad word. That's talking about all the other nations. They said, let us put away the wives. Once again, this is why the Moabites, the Egyptians, and the Edomites were included. And this is what I mean when I say in Deuteronomy chapter 7, it said many nations and then only named seven Canaanite nations. So obviously when it says many nations, it's not just talking about these seven Canaanite nations. It's chiefly talking about these seven Canaanite nations. But this also extends to other nations as well, which we are proving and we're going to keep on proving as we go along through this video. And for you brothers that say that, well, I could take a heathen wife as long as she's converted. Why are these men putting away 
their wives and the children that they bear for them away if all they got to do is convert. I can see the seven Canaanite nations because, like they say, it's listed in Deuteronomy 7. But the Moabites, the Egyptians, and the Edomites, why they didn't just convert them? Why they didn't just tell them to serve the God of Israel? And everything's going to be all good. Well, we're going to see why in chapter 9. First Ezra chapter 9 and verse 7, look what it says. So Ezra rose up and said unto them, Ye have transgressed the law in marrying strange wives, thereby to increase the sins of Israel. Now notice, it was called an iniquity in First Ezra chapter 8 and verse 70. It was called a sin in First Ezra 8 and 92. And now it's being called a transgression. A sin, an iniquity, and a transgression. All these terms are synonymous for wickedness. Verse 8, And now by confessing, give glory unto the Lord God of our fathers, and do his will, and separate, and separate yourselves from the heathen of the land and from the strange woman. So now once again, this is why they're not just converting them. Because it is the most highest will to separate from these people. Okay, so now we're in Ezra chapter 9. Just to see that the book of First Ezra in your Apocrypha and the book of Ezra in your regular King James Bible is pretty much going to tell you the same thing, right? In Ezra chapter 9 and verse 1, it says, Now when these things were done, the princess came to me. Now, once again, notice it's the princess coming to Ezra with this matter, saying, The people of Israel, the priests and the Levites, have not separated themselves from the people of the lands, Doing according to their abominations, right? So, once again, the people, the men of Israel, were participating in the sacrifices, the worship of these gods, the rites and the rituals that pertain to these gods, doing according to their abominations. Even the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Jebusites, the Ammonites, the Moabites, the Egyptians, and the Amorites. So, now we see the Ammonites and the Amorites are in there as well now. Okay, it says, verse 2, For they have taken of their daughters for themselves and for their sons, so that the holy seed have mingled themselves with the people of those lands. Yea, the hand of the princes and rulers have been chief in this trespass. So now, once again, it's just establishing the same thing here, right? That the men of Israel were taking these strange women as wives and it was causing them to serve their gods okay so now let's do a recap on what we just read we first went into the law in deuteronomy chapter 17 and verse 8 which says if there arise a matter too hard for thee in judgment between blood and blood between plea and plea between stroke and stroke being matters of controversy within thy gates right it told you in first ezra's chapter 8 in verse 68, and also in Ezra chapter 9 and verse 1, that the princes or the rulers of the people, they saw a matter where the men of Israel were taking strange wives of the peoples of the lands. And they brought the matter to Ezra, right? Let's see what it says. Then shalt thou arise and get thee up into the place which the Lord thy God shall choose, and thou shalt come unto the priests, the Levites, the princes, had the matter, they came unto the priest, that being Ezra, and unto the judge, right? Ezra was the judge during that time, shall be in those days, and inquire. And they, talking about the priest or the judge, shall show thee the sentence of judgment. Ezra showed us the sentence of judgment. He showed us that we have to separate from the people of the lands, not just the seven Canaanite nations that are listed in Deuteronomy 7, but they also included the Ammonites. The Moabites, the Egyptians, and the Edomites as well. Okay? And then it says, verse 10, And thou shalt do according to the sentence. Now, we been in the same situation, having the same controversy, having the same problem, the same debate. Verse 10 says, And thou shalt do according to the sentence. This has already been solved. By the priest Ezra. So seeing as though he's already made the judgment. All we have to do is do it now. Which day of that place which the Lord shall choose. Shall show thee. 
and thou shalt observe to do according to all that they inform thee. Ezra informed us that it is the Most High's will to separate from these people because when taking them in marriage, they cause you to serve their gods. Verse 11, according to the sentence of the law, which they shall teach thee in accordance to the judgment, which they shall tell thee, thou shalt do, thou shalt not decline from the sentence, which they shall show thee to the right hand or to the left. So now this is telling us that we can't just decline from the right hand. We can't just say, oh, well, you know, that was during that time. So, you know, we ain't got to worry about that now. We can't just say, oh, well, you know, that was what Ezra, that was what he decided. Um, but we got people who could decide different things now. You shall not decline from the right hand or to the left. And we already know that the man that will do presumptuously, meaning the man that will do whatever he want, the Most High commanded that he shall die. We also read in Deuteronomy 21 and 5, it says the priests, the sons of Levi shall come near. Once again, Ezra was the son of Aaron. Okay, he's a priest. It said, for them, the Lord thy God have chosen to minister unto him. And to bless in the name of the Lord, and by their word shall every controversy and every stroke be tried. By Ezra's word, the controversy of our men taking these heathen women in marriage was tried, and his word was that we should separate from those people. Therefore, we have to do according to the sentence of this judgment. It's not hard. All right, but let's get another witness. So now the next witness that we're going to get is recorded in first Kings chapter 11. And I'm going to start at verse one. It says, but King Solomon loved many strange women. Say he loved strange women, the same strange woman that Ezra told us in the book of first Ezra to separate from. Notice what nation it names. It says together with the daughter of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Zidonians, and Hittites. Verse 2. Of the nations concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, ye shall not go in to them, neither shall they come in unto you. For surely they will turn away thy heart after other gods. Solomon clave unto these in love. Now, it said of the nations concerning which the Lord said. Said is past tense. So when did he say not to go in unto these nations, nor take these nations in unto you? For they will turn away your heart from the Most High to serve other gods. When did he say this? Okay, now we're back in Deuteronomy 7 so that we can see what 1 Kings 11 is talking about, right? We already establish that in Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 1, it starts off by talking about many nations, then it only names seven. But when you jump to verse 3, it says the same exact thing that 1 Kings chapter 11 and verse 2 says. It says, Neither shalt thou make marriages with them. Thy daughter thou shalt not give unto his son, nor his daughter shalt thou take unto thy son. For they will turn away thy son from following me, that they may serve other gods. So will the anger of the Lord be kindled against you and destroy. Now, it's saying the same exact thing. Only difference is that it talks about the Ammonites, the Moabites, the Egyptians, the Edomites, and the Zidonians, which are not nations listed in Deuteronomy chapter 7. So obviously, and when it says many nations, it's not just talking about these seven nations. But let's continue on in 1 Kings chapter 11, right? I'm going to start at verse 4. It says, For it came to pass when Solomon was old that his wives turned away his heart after other gods, and his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God, as was the heart of David his father. Now, it goes into talking about how he started going after the gods of each of his different strange wives. He went after the gods of the Moabites, the Ammonites, the Egyptians. Right? And he even goes as far as to say in verse 7, Solom Solomon built a high place for the gods of his women right it says in verse 8 and likewise did he for all his strange wives which burnt incense and sacrifice unto their gods so he was building high places for these gods in the land i cannot stress this enough brothers this was the wisest man who ever lived 
according to Ecclesiastes chapter 1, and I believe it's verse 16. It tells that he's the wisest man to ever live. The Most High came to him in a dream in 1 Kings chapter 3, and he asked him, what do we want? And he asked for an understanding heart. And Solomon had all this wisdom, and even his wives turned him away to serving other gods. Once again, in verse 2, it says, for surely they will turn away your heart after other gods. He didn't say they might turn away your heart to other gods. He, the most I say they could turn away your heart from to other gods. He said, surely, meaning this will happen, bro. This will happen. So don't give me that foolishness about how you're going to convert your heathen wife into serving a God of Israel. All that is nonsense. All right. It says in the Bible that for surely they will turn away your heart and to serve other gods. This happened to Solomon, the wisest man to ever live. This happened to the princes and the rulers of the congregation. These are men who knew our culture, who knew our heritage, who were living in the land and who did not have to wake up into knowing who they are. And you think you, who have been in the truth one year, two years, three years, five years, you didn't live the majority of your life in wickedness. You didn't live the majority of your life in the world. And you think that you're just about to come here and just bring your heathen wife along and say you're just going to convert her. Just stop it. There was only one way that you can take a heathen wife lawfully, according to the Bible. And that is as a spoil of war, which none of our men are going to war today. Because we don't even have our own army. I'm going to be addressing that in part two of this video. But as it relates to just taking them at leisure. No, that is a sin according to the Bible. As we've shown with the witnesses. Um, that, we, that was provided in this video. And as we've shown with the laws of God. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you received some type of edification uh, through this video. If you enjoyed it, leave a like. Um, if you have any questions or if you disagree with anything that was stated, um, leave a comment. All right, there's nothing wrong with brothers disagreeing um, as long as you do it respectfully, right? Because iron sharpens iron, and this is a very controversial topic amongst Israel, so it's to be expected. Um, but nevertheless, uh, hopefully you enjoyed this video, and um, there will be a part two to this series. Um, so with that, I'll say shalom.